what is going on you guys today i'm coming to you with my gen con predictions for x-wing so a lot of stuff uh, but before i dive in i do want to let you guys know that before gen con kicks off i am doing a big giveaway for three of the new conversion kits for x-wing 2.0 in the form of a cool stuff gift card the only thing you need to do to enter to win one of those is to become a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos it's as simple as that uh if you do become a subscriber make sure you click that little bell for alerts so you can make sure that you don't miss out on any future updates i will probably be announcing the winner very shortly right before gen con probably closer to the end of July. So stay tuned for that. Um, three of those I'm giving away. So this is much bigger than my normal giveaways. Um, I'm also going to be doing some uh, giveaways throughout July in Patreon as well. So lots and lots of giveaways. Just want to get all that admin stuff out of the way. Now let's dive in to the predictions. So I'm gonna be talking about what I think they're gonna be announcing. Um, my guess is as good as yours, but I just I've kind of put everything together and uh, we can, you know, you can let me know what you disagree with and don't agree with or what you think I got right. Uh, and then, you know, later on we'll look back and see. Uh, first thing I do think, you know, we know that certain things are already planned. We know that there's uh, we're gonna, they're gonna be doing a pre-release at Gen Con, so early stuff, you'll be able to pick up your core sets and you're, you're kind of like your wave one of 2.0 stuff. I don't think there's going to be any 1.0 stuff. I don't think they're going to be doing anything else for 1.0. I'd be really surprised if they were continuing to print like obsolete um, product at this point. So I think it'll all be 2.0, um, and, I, and I don't think they're going to do anything with huge ships just yet. I think Epic Play uh, is coming like they said, but I think it'll probably be an afterthought. I think the big things that they're going to focus on are the stuff that they've kind of already talked about and the things that they have to finish uh, and, and get balanced. So I'm going to talk about the Rebels first. I'm going to break it down by faction. First thing I'm going to talk about with Rebels is things I think that they are going to announce some of the reprints for. Uh, especially, I think they'll highlight some of the ones that may have new sculpts and or paint jobs. I'm going to start off with the HWK290. I think they're going to have to eventually do this, and this would be a great opportunity. This is probably maybe the number one most requested ship to be reprinted because it was originally printed just way too small. And in a game that scale is actually pretty pretty good, this is like maybe one of the worst examples of that. So uh, especially now that they have the medium base, it's a perfect opportunity to reprint the HWK 290. So I think that the, this will be coming. Uh, additionally, um, my hope is uh, you know a lot. Of, I think I think it's reasonable since they've upgraded their components so much. I think we can see new B wings coming, uh, and so. Um, now, if they do new B-Wings, there's a couple of questions on how might they do them. Um, a lot of people have said, will they do S-Foils on B-Wings? If you look right here, I chose this picture because it's a great look at how difficult it would be to do S-Foils on a small B-Wing because you would actually have to have hinges there. With the X-Wing, it was easier because you just had to make one piece of plastic this way and one piece of plastic this, this way, and they're going to do this. So you didn't necessarily need to put those tiny, tiny little hinges uh, with as much detail. But for a B-Wing like this, I think it could be tricky. I would love to see it done, and I imagine something like that could be done, um, but I think it would be much easier to break. What I would rather see, if I had to only choose one customization or improvement to the B-Wing, is that rotating cockpit. I would, you know, In the original 1.0 B-Wings, you had the, the stand went up, and sideways into the engine compartment, compartment of the B-Wing uh, and then it didn't move. But I would rather it, in the new ones for it to go up and go into the cockpit and this way the whole B-Wing can swivel around the cockpit so you don't have to have people trying to use magnets and customizing their own B-Wings. Uh, granted, you still can, more power to you if you want to, but I tried that and failed a couple of times. So basically that's my prediction. Um, gyroscopic B-Wings and if they happen to really go above and beyond and, and make the S-Wings open and close, I'd be absolutely blown away. Um, and I think if they did that, that would drastically increase the price. But because B-Wings are my favorite ship, personally, I'd be fine paying like $30 or $40 for a new B-Wing. But that's just me because that's my favorite ship. Most people I don't think would be. So I'd like ultimately, if I'm being objective, I think it'd probably be a bad move for a small ship that used to cost, you know... 10 15 bucks uh the ghost i think the ghost even though it's one of the more new ships and is a really great sculpt i think the ghost might get uh, a little bit of a remodel because of what we saw with lando's falcon 
for the Scum and Villainy faction and how that ship is actually going to fit in there. And when you deploy it, it will actually come out. Um, the Ghost has been, like, ever since it came out, people were like, well, can we actually have the Phantom dock and come off and come back on? And I, and I chose this picture specifically because this is showing the Phantom 2. Since when the Ghost came out in Rebels, we just had the Phantom 1, and then there was, you know, there was a new Phantom, so they had a different shuttle. There's different configurations for the Ghost. So if they do a static Ghost, maybe they'll have it with the Phantom 2 in, uh, in there. But what people would really like to see, and I don't think it would be that hard, is to just have an em engine, in, uh, empty engine compartment in there that either the Phantom 1 or the Phantom 2 can physically go into. It would also require a re-sculpted Phantom 1 that uh, m basically might have to have wings that fold up in and out. That one might be tricky. Uh, or they could just have a detachable wings that physically separate. Uh, or just maybe a third piece that goes in there, uh, you know, to just to show that it's deployed. There's a lot of different ways they can do it. The Phantom 2 is going to be the much easier one because it doesn't have foldable wings. I don't think they're going to give you foldable wings that do this uh, like the Phantom 1 has, but if they come up with a way to at least have the Phantom 1 be able to go in there and come out somehow, I'll be very, very impressed. And it might be as simple as having some grooves so that the wings actually slide into the base and you just don't see them. That, mm, I don't know. That, I think we, we, we could talk at length about different ways to actually do that but if they come up with a clever way to do it i'll be really impressed they've come up with some out of the box thinking before on some things that we weren't sure how they were going to do and i have no doubts that they could do that here the ghost is such a popular ship and if it physically docks i mean you do have a lot of people who buy these ships as collectors because they're really really great collector items as well even if you don't play the game some people just get it for the model to have it on their desk so this would um, boost sales in that department as well i think and as somebody who already has two ghosts, I would totally buy a third one just for that sculpt. Um, now I want to talk about uh, new ships that could be coming. Uh, and, and the thing is, it's, it's tough to make new predictions on the Rebels. I don't know if they'll announce too many all-new ships, but we might get one. The reason I say I don't think we'll get too many all-new ships is because like the conversion kits, all that's coming out. They've already announced so much, and we do already have a new ship coming for the Scum and Villainy faction, which is Lando's Falcon. So... Again, not super sure, but maybe Lando's luxury yacht, the the Lady Luck, might be coming. Um, it, it is it is canonized now, and so that's you know that's something, but um, you know it's not one of those things that people are like super like people are kind of one way or the other. And the one thing that makes me think that okay, this this really could come in is you know you're seeing more of a focus on Lando with with the with the solo movie. But, I mean, this wasn't in the Solo movie, but you're seeing a little bit more of a focus on Lando here. But, um, I think maybe with the TIE Reaper kind of acting as an extra kind of transport, it might open some doors there. Possibly. You know. But then again, they're, I'm not trying to say that this is like the TIE Reaper. But the crew capacity, since Empire just got a new ship that has some crew, you know, some decent crew capacity. It's possible, but then again, at the same time, Rebels have a pretty good number of ships that have some decent crew capacity. So they don't really need this. It would be more of a thing to just complete, you know, one of those iconic pieces. Um, so let's talk about, uh, oh, and the Otana. I think the Otana has been, like, fan requested for a long time. And, and you know, I, I think it would work. Only problem is we've got a lot of, you know, the, a lot of those large ships now. So I'm not sure mechanically how they would do this. But I know it would please a pretty good number of fans... Uh, and they have pulled from the Azamine family already. So it's it's not unthinkable. All right, um, we're going to talk about the Empire. So the first ship I think that might be able to stand with a reprint is the original Lambda. Um, I just, there, there's something about the original Lambda model and X-Wing that just didn't sit well with me. Like it did, it seemed like it was a tear down compared to the quality of all the other models. Something about, I don't know if it was the plastic or the paint process that went on it. Um, maybe it was too white. Maybe it should have been more of a gray or a plastic and more, you know, like a, like an off-white um, because that shade of white that the Lambda was just didn't look right and so the wash didn't sit well in it. Maybe it needed to be a little bit bigger than it was also on top of that. Um, either way, uh, I think the Lambda could do 
with just a you know a, a complete redesign and also like different people's lambdas function differently but like mine the wings never fully went down all the way yeah, it felt like they were going to break the whole ship if they went down so it was the first attempt at actual moving pieces i think they could just kind of go back to the drawing board with this one and come up with a better uh, a better option so there is that as well um and if we had to, if i had to pick another one it's possible that we could see its high advanced prototype uh, with the collapsing wings. Now, I don't really think this is going to happen, but it is possible, and it would be neat if they gave it, but it would, they would only do this if it gave game functionality, and since this was a move that the ship only did when it was landing, um, I don't think that that's really uh, you know high on the list of priorities. And the, but the thing that does lend it some possibility is that the U-wing has the folding wings for when it was landing, you know, the landing mode for pivot wing. So, there is some precedent there. It could happen. This one's more of a long shot, but if they're looking to, you know, if they're looking to come up with new ways for you to buy um, ships that you already have for the model, then this is a possibility. This would get me to buy to buy a new one. You know, um, who am I kidding? I'm gonna buy a new one anyway. Uh, for new ships for the Empire, this one I think is a no-brainer. You know, the the Tie RB or the Tie Brute. Uh, this this Tie RB heavy starfighter. Um, it'll be a TIE fighter with, we assume, a cannon. It'd be much tougher. So, uh, you know, and this one's in Solo, so, you know, they have to, you know, every new Star Wars movie has to have something all new. The farther back in the past they go, the more brand new stuff they have to add. So, naturally, um, you know, <laughs> which is, it's ironic, but it's, you know, it is what it is. I live in the real world, and of course they were going to do this. So I'm not really bent out of shape over it. Um, it's just funny to me. It's like a nitpick. Uh, at least there wasn't like a ton of them like, oh, the Empire's full of Thai Brute. There was one, so like, okay, maybe they were rare. Or maybe it was an experiment that failed. Or maybe they only operated in Kessel. Regardless of why it's there, I think it's definitely going to show up. Um, I hope they don't make it a ship that you will want to swarm. I hope it's a ship that you will want to have maybe one of in your list, and that's it. Just so it feels a little bit more thematic. But I don't know, it's also a business, and they want you to buy lots of them. So they'll probably make them pretty good. But then again, the game's not supposed to necessarily be... It's supposed to be a little abstract, right? Otherwise, you know, you couldn't have, you know, Luke and Vader blowing up, you know, each other, you know, while, you know, uh, other other pilots are still alive. And, you know, you couldn't have people dying in a random, random space battle that weren't supposed to die in a random space battle. Scum! Let's talk about Scum and Villainy. So Scum and Villainy, I think if they're going to do any reprints, the first one on my list would be for the Houndstooth to be a little bit larger. Um, you know, docking is a new thing, and uh, or it's, there's a new approach to docking, and one of the things is this is still going to have the Nashta Pup. Um, and, and they've made some changes to that. I'll, if you want to learn more about those, you can check out the... Uh, like I did a, a live stream, and we did a, a breakdown of the, the Scum and Villainy. Um, conversion kits, and they, they talked a little bit about uh, how this is going to work, but, but docking is going to be a little more streamlined now. Um, I don't think they will they would ever make this so large, in fact, that you could actually fit a Z95 inside of it, um, but if they made a Z95 with folding wings, then maybe, but I'd like to see it be a little bit larger just because it seems like it's a little bit too small. Um, and, and definitely smaller than it should be, depending on where you where you look. Uh, so there is that. Um, and another thing that, like, if we're talking about scum, um, I don't know if they'll announce any new ships because they just announced one. So I think if we get any big surprises for scum, it might be that they say, "All right, well, oh, by the way, Lando's Falcon is on sale in the showroom floor, starting now. Go." You know, maybe there'll be something like that, which would be really cool because I'm going to be there and I would love to be able to pick one up. So part of this is wishful thinking, too. Uh, no doubts about that. Part of it, definitely wishful thinking. Um, and, and I will say, if they do announce a new ship, we do have, like from Last Jedi, we have DJ's ship. Um, so And and, and this was a, a Libertine yacht. And you know, Granted, it really wasn't DJ's ship, but uh, that's kind of what people know it as. Um, and this was a high-speed high, high ship. This was a... Granted, it was pretty much a civilian craft, but it was really cutting edge, so it could, in theory, be, you know, pretty, um, maybe real fast and have a lot of shields and maybe not that great of weapons, but could be useful for, as, like, a support ship or something like that. But this begs a big question, and this is something that maybe will get answered 
in in the in the, you know at Gen Con is and it's one of my answers is since we have multiple factions now like more factions since we've got at least five I'm saying at least five because I'm hoping they do more than five I would really like to see Clone Wars factions but it really bugs begs the question is the scum and villainy faction going to cover all time frames because we still have you know that episode seven um, quad jumper that's in the scum and villainy faction as of right now in in as in the the uh, conversion kit so are they going to you know are they going to continue that or will at some point they say okay all right all right it, like what if they wanted to do clone wars factions would Django fett have to be in scum or or would he work cis you know would hondo from the clone wars be scum or would he you know work Gosh, I, I, mean, I don't know, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine who, you know, he, he could be on, he could work for either side. Or maybe they'll be non-aligned, but then again, I don't think they'll do non-aligned because of the fact that you have scum, and that's kind of where non-aligned would be. So, uh, you know, I, my, I guess my bigger question is, you know, if they're going to do all timelines, then this one's certainly game. But I would I would like some clarification on, on just which timelines scum is eligible to contain. You know, because I'd love to hear and see some more about that. Um, speaking of other factions, while I'm on it, um, I don't. I do think at some point, like they've certainly future-proofed it enough that they could do um, a CIS and Old Republic factions. I would love to see that. I would love to see. I think there's so much in the Clone Wars era timeline that makes itself great for a war game. But I don't think that we'll see any any news on that or any announcements for that at Gen Con. I think it's one of those things where it's going to depend. They have a brand new product right now, and they have a lot of stuff that they still have to balance and release, and they've already announced the First Order and Resistance. So I think they have a lot of work to do before trying to jump into Factions 6 and 7. Uh, all right. So, you know, I, I think they would be... Give, They'd be getting way too much ahead of themselves to announce that this early. I do want to see it, and I think if X-Wing 2.0 is a big success over this next year, maybe next year's Gen Con we might see, oh, Clone Wars factions are now on the, uh, you know, being developed because we've realized that this is a hit and it's still a success, etc. But since we're talking about factions, let's talk about our sequel trilogy factions, which we know are coming. Um, a lot of this is going to depend on Star Wars Resistance, I think. I think since this show is coming out, this is going to provide so much for these two factions. And this is why these two are definitely getting their own faction, too. Um, it, it helps alleviate a lot of things like the T-70 versus the T-65 X-Wing and all of that. Um, and, you know, having them separate gives, you know... But I think whatever this ship is, it's in the logo for Star Wars Resistance, will definitely be one of them. We've already seen it. I don't think it's an X-Wing. I think it's a Z-95. Um, but then again, you know, it could be something else altogether. Um, just doesn't look like an X-Wing. If it is an X-Wing, it's a whole different type. Maybe it's a custom. Um, or maybe maybe it's a T-85 X-Wing or, or something like that. Who knows? Um, regardless of whatever type of ship this is, I think we'll see it in the Resistance faction. Um, if they're ready to announce more details on the Resistance factions, I think Resistance and First Order factions will be the things that they talk about uh, a little bit more so than everything else because details for Rebels, Empire, and Scum, they can be like, all right, we'll just go out, they're available, go out there and buy them, they're on the show floor. I think they will, if we, if we see a preview of more new stuff, it may be for these factions because um, the course, the conversion kits for these are not yet available, right? And so, but they're going to be cheaper than the other ones, uh, so because there's less stuff in there. So, you know, that that's something they may announce. But this ship, right here, um, and of course the RZ two A wing, RZ two A wing. You know, we were wondering how it would be different than the regular A wing. Well, it doesn't have to be that different because if it's for a whole another faction, it's going to be the Resistance's version of that light fast interceptor. I think, and as as it stands, I, have, I would predict that it will be. Almost identical to the A-Wing. Uh, probably have one extra move. Probably have, uh, you know, maybe one extra shield. And I, I would also guess it would have the tech access to the tech slot. That's that. That's my guess. Um, it may, you know, it may it may be asymmetrical though. It may have one more hull and one less shield, you know, or something like that. Um, you know, it, it may not be a complete trump of the Rebels version of the A-Wing, uh, but just maybe different enough. Um, 
while still being very, very similar. Because it's for a whole other faction. So it could be almost the same thing. It's fine. You know, like in medieval games, you have archers for both sides, but sometimes they work differently. Um, so uh, now we also have this resistance transport that never came out. Um, you know, when episode seven came out, you know, this is the one that Leia comes out of. Uh, and and um, it looked like it was basically made from like an old B Wing design. Of course, this was from the. Uh, the, the the visual dictionary, right? So it just tells you it was made from an old B-wing cockpit, at least. But I think this is a perfect opportunity to drop this ship into the Resistance faction, because now suddenly the Resistance doesn't have crew, well, many crew options. They have the new Falcon, but they don't have like that that transport, right? Like the like the Empire has like the Tie bomber that you can put that title on and just make it a, tra a shuttle. Uh, the, the Empire has like the TIE Reaper, you know. Um, you know, they don't have just that that cheaper crew support ship option in, in in the Resistance right now. So I think this would be a perfect time. Since you don't have the wealth of, like, you know, the Rebels had access to like the HWK and, and ships like that. Um, you don't now. You now you have a, a real cheap option to, to to throw a couple of crew. You know, a good two crew ship could be a three crew ship if you want it to be. If it's not going to be like, I, I imagine it would have access to the cannon slot, but it would have you know very weak uh, nor, native weaponry, and also the cockpit itself um, is like that same co is that same shuttle we saw in um, in uh, Last Jedi that Finn and Rose used. So it, it's, it's so like it, here's also an option that you can have docking, a docking mechanic. So you can make this thing do all kinds of really interesting stuff. Um, and and I, I would I like to see this even like maybe as a lifeboat. Like if the support if the supply ship gets destroyed, you can take one crew and transfer them over to to uh, to the dock, you know the cockpit and go ahead and launch the this thing. And this would lose the cannon slot, of course. And this would have like. Maybe no weapons. I don't know if they'll want to go back to the whole primary attack of one thing, but it would be kind of cool to see some some docking stuff with, uh, you know, with the uh, with the resistance. So that's those are my resistance predictions. Now we're on to the first order. Now the first order is going to be tough because there's not a whole lot of stuff that we can really do. Like we have these drop ships that you saw in episode seven. This doesn't seem like it belongs in X-Wing, but it's about the only really good canon option that I can at least show you a picture of, right? So beyond this, we're going to have to really stretch. And this makes me think that either A, um, they won't show us anything for the First Order. I mean, unless it's this, maybe you could have this. Again, I, 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 I don't know. I'm stretching it here. But, or B, they will reveal something that we haven't seen before. And they've done this before. Remember the Raider? Uh, the Raider was something FFG worked with Lucasfilm, and then they said, "Baba, look what we've created for you guys! Something brand new." You might get an, a first look at maybe a new First Order ship from the show Resistance. That would be really cool, uh, and that would be a, like a huge, huge deal for just not just for for X Wing, but for, for for Star Wars in general. So that would be really cool. But. Outside of that, um, I think it's gonna definitely gonna be a resistance show stuff. We also have, um, you know, they could lean on the Amaxine Warriors. So the Amaxine Warriors were a faction of, um, of folks under, you know, in the Leia novel um, Bloodline, and you know there was the, there was this uh, Arlis Hadrasian was you know, main character, one of the main characters in this book, and they were just these warrior people that were kind of like, you know working with the First Order, kind of like contracted by the First Order to kind of, you know, almost very similar to like Mandalorians and they trained with Force Pikes and they were just, they were, you know, like hired, hired muscle, basically. And so they would totally work under the First Order, but we don't have real any uh, images uh, of them. And, and, and you know, like, th like this is actually from one of the Poe comic books. It's not, this is not them, but, you know, <laughs> it's just... I needed a placeholder to, for a while I was talking about the Amaxine Warriors because maybe we'll see something in a comic um, or maybe there's something in a comic that I have missed that you guys can point out to me. But I don't think we've seen any of the Amaxine Warriors yet. Um, but we, there are, what, I guess my point with this, with this image is that there are other ships out there. We just haven't seen them physically represented yet. And I would like to see more of that. That being said... Um, we can stretch it a little bit more and talk about yachts. 
Um, Palpatine's yacht, like you, you had this in in the Lando comic, um, but I, you know, I think there's some discrepancy on on exactly what Palpatine's yacht. Well, he had, I think, he, I believe he had several, but on what they actually looked like, because here it looks blue, but according to um, the and the reason I say Palpatine's yacht is because it was used with the First Order. Brendel Hux of the First Order was um, using this, and he actually crashed his yacht on a planet, and that's where Phasma made her armor from. Uh, and so that's you know, so it definitely had it has canon usage in the in the First Order. Plus, if you've read the Aftermath trilogy, it's kind of one of the things that helped get some of the leaders to the First Order to help its foundation was on board uh, one of Palpatine's yachts. So these luxury yachts could totally work. They are also, um, there's also a pretty good chance that a yacht like this may have been Snoke's escape craft or escape shuttle that Rey stole to get off of the Supremacy in The Last Jedi. That is... Uh, technically another craft but we don't know what it looks like it may have been something this big i think it was more likely maybe an escape pod although i can't imagine snoke getting into a small escape pod whatever it was it has to be something so insignificant that ray wanted to ditch it and get on board the falcon unless she planted it somewhere you know who knows that would actually be kind of cool if she hid it somewhere went with chewie and like all right we'll come back you know, and then she takes the resistance and is like, okay, well, we can't all be on one ship. And then they fly and they're like, here, I got this awesome, awesome platinum yacht that's that was Snoke's. Um, Leia, you can go and, and sleep there. And she's like, no, this dark side force here, I won't go. You know, who knows? I mean, like, I'm getting, I'm getting into speculation here. But basically, you have these, you know, these VIP yachts uh, that once, you know, at least... At least one of them once belongs to Pal Palpatine. They could use that, or they could use Snoke's version that was on the Supremacy. He had to have had a nice one that Re that Ray escaped on. Uh, and then, last but not least, um, we have some more st stuff from the Last Jedi. Now, this—if you look at this, because it's an outline—it looks just like a Tie Bomber from the Empire. But this is during a scene where DJ is showing Finn all of these First Order ships and also Resistance ships, and it's all sequel trilogy stuff. It's all sequel trilogy stuff. There's like T-70 X-Wings in here. But he shows them a TIE Bomber and a TIE Interceptor. Now, since we can't see actually the coloring on here, for all we know, like they're actually white and black um, like the First Order. So they could be First Order Bombers and First Order Interceptors um, that are coming as well. Uh, you know, and and that's possible. I don't read Orabesh, so it's possible that these say like, oh, legacy Imperial vehicles or something like that. Um, which I guess you could do. I don't. I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to, the first order to be just using something that's a, exactly the same as you know a straight up tie bomber from the Empire. I would want them to have like their own version of it, like give it access to the tech slot or change it up a little bit in the way that some of like the scum and villainy ships when they borrowed ships from another faction, they were changed up just a little bit, like they gained the illicit slot or or something like that. I think that would be kind of cool. And, uh, and that's my prediction, so uh, I think we'll have a little bit more news for those new factions, First Order and Resistance, um, and hopefully some more reprints, because we know that they did say that they're going to try to get you know the, all that stuff reprinted in 2.0 um, faster than originally, so it's not going to take four or five years to get 14 waves of stuff out. I think we'll probably have them all, the, all 14 waves worth of stuff reprinted within maybe two years as opposed to five years, so we might see some previews on that. Um, hopefully there's some cool stuff coming though. I don't think we'll see anything on, on the uh, on you know the Clone Wars factions or any of that stuff. Uh, at least not yet. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Enter to win that giveaway. Uh, that again, those uh, you know, click the bell for alerts so you don't miss when I announce the winners. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.